In this video, we're going to go over how Paul McCartney took this piece by Bach and used elements of it to create the classic song Blackbird. Hey everybody, Gary here with Pal Music, and in this video we're going to go over how Paul McCartney took inspiration from Bach's Bore in E minor, very popular guitar piece originally composed for the lute, and how he used that inspiration to then compose Blackbird, which has a lot of the same compositional techniques. So this lesson is actually a companion song lesson for my Fret Live Fretboard Mastery Program, which walks you through understanding how music works on the guitar, which starts at the very beginning just with the musical alphabet and how it's laid out on the guitar, then gets into how we create scales, harmony, chords, how to move those things all over the fretboard and play them in different areas and in different keys. And each step along the way, there's song lessons, creative challenges, and worksheets. And it's a live course, so we have live Zoom sessions every week. And there's a group where you could share your work and get feedback. So if you want to sign up for the course, link is in the description. So this song goes along with a couple of the lessons that are deeper in the course on playing scales using intervals and secondary dominance. So we're going to go over what those compositional techniques are. We're gonna go over two different techniques, how I played it in the intro, finger style, that's how I prefer to play it, versus Paul's two finger strum method. And then there's also a challenge for you to take some of these tools, make something all your own, and share it in the Fretboard Adventures Facebook group, link is in the description, or on Instagram and just tag POW Music, hashtag POW Music Challenge. So in the intro, I just played a compressed version of Blackbird that had all of the chord sequences, but the song itself has a kind of tricky structure. But if you want to download the complete tab that goes from the beginning to the end of the song, that's both playable, you could play it in Guitar Pro, or there's a video where you could just play the video and hear and watch the tab, or download the PDF that's available for POW Music patrons, and the link is in the description. Same thing goes for Beret in E minor. I just played the very iconic first few measures that most people associate with that song, but you could also download and play the complete tab, and the link for all of that is in the description. So before we get into the lesson, let's hear Paul McCartney's story on how he came up with the song using inspiration from Bach. All right, this next song I wrote was uh, started by a little thing that me and George used to do when we were kids in Liverpool. And we used to have like a little party piece uh, to show people that we were not quite as thick as we looked. We had a little bit of classical music uh, that we used to play. We used to go like this. It's not actually right. I mean, it's by Bach, but it's like it's not quite how it goes so, we didn't know that bit so we made this bit of and i kind of took that and um made it into the song so a cool little coincidence for me is that i recently interviewed melanie fay an amazing modern r b guitar player and singer and songwriter and uh I was talking with her about how she took Beret in E minor and made a video where she took some of the ideas from there and made it really funky and groovy. So I'll show that as well.
So the real big takeaway here for me is just the more music you learn, the more techniques, the more ways of approaching harmony, the more tools you have to then incorporate into your own playing. And creating your music shouldn't come from nowhere. It could very intentionally come from something that you learn, something that you love, that you then kind of reinvent to make your own thing. All right, so let's see what's going on here. So first, let's look at Beret in E minor. And if I'm butchering the name Beret, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm pronouncing it like the hat. Hopefully that's correct. If not, my apologies. So the main technique that's going on here with Beret is just that we have two voices. That's it. We have the melody and the bass. Even though there are chords that are implied, so we're playing, we're landing on chord tones, we're implying a chord, but it's just two notes. Guitarists always feel the pressure to play complete chords, but we can really distill it down to two notes. So let's check this out. So off the bat with these two voices, what we see is a common classical technique called counterpoint, where the bass goes down and the melody goes up and then we put that together right so we have two lines going in opposite directions and Paul does that when he goes like this right this goes and this goes so this, the, the top line goes do, da, do, da, do. So it goes up, down, up, down. But the bass just goes up, 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 up. So then back to that first phrase in beret. Now what we land on is a chord, an E minor chord. And the interval we're playing is a root and a minor third. E and the third, G, but we're playing it two octaves higher. So we could call it a compound interval, a really big one too. Then he works his way down to a B7. And what are we playing? Root and major third. like we're gonna do in Blackbird, right? So the main purpose of this video is to learn and analyze Blackbird, but I just wanted to give you just a couple measures to show you what was going on in Beret. Now later in the piece of Beret, there's all these secondary dominants, which I'm gonna explain as we get to them in Blackbird, because this is another classical technique. It's used in all sorts of music, but is used extensively in classical music. And we're going to talk about how Paul used that. And I'm sure it's something he heard in his ear from playing beret and just found it by ear as he talks about in that video. But in the tab, it has all the chord symbols. So you understand what's happening harmonically and it's the entire piece and the link is in the description. So with that in mind, let's get into Blackbird. All right. So the way it starts is Paul is really just going up the chord scale in this melody. What I mean by that is in the key of G, we have G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Now, if we were going to play that using the interval of a third, we need to know, okay, one, four, and five are major in, in a major key. The, the one, four, and five chord are major. The two, three, and six are minor and the seven is diminished. But if we're playing thirds, a diminished chord has a minor third. So we could think two, three, six, seven, minor thirds, one, four, five, major thirds. So then we have G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor, F sharp diminished, but minor third, back to G. So major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, minor, major. And this is what the, the whole song, it's all this chord scale stuff. Just that sounds so much more interesting than just a single note or the chord. 
you know, that is starting to sound thick and bulky, but when we just have these two voices and a pedal, beautiful, right? It's like a lullaby. And as far as these shapes, you know, open chord, open chord, now we're into the A minor shape bar chord on the B minor, then the C, then the D. These are all the A shape, right? And we work our way up to here. A, the A shape bar chord, if we're thinking cage system. All right, so G major, root and third. Now technique wise, if you wanna play this finger style, I recommend you use thumb and middle finger on the outer notes. And then we're gonna play a G pedal tone open G string that you should play with your first finger. So now we have this. So we play the two outer ones together and then the pedal tone. And a pedal tone is just a tone that uh, plays throughout. It's like a harmonic bedrock that uh, extends throughout a chord progression. And what I'm doing technique wise is you can plant your pinky if it's helpful. Or just keep your, your arm you know, firm against the guitar so your hand isn't kind of rolling around. And then just load the string right where the nail meets the flesh. I have some nail, which is very helpful. And then I'm just using the thumb to get the bass note. If you're gonna play it the Paul way, you're just gonna use your thumb and your first finger, and then just kind of flick down with your first finger. And then to A minor, root and minor third, and the pedal. B minor, root and minor third, up to G up here. We started here and we're working our way up here. Okay, now this pattern, once we get up to here, I'm gonna say both when we play the two outer notes on the A and the B string. And then I'm gonna say string number, both three, two, five, two, three. Both three, two, five, two, three. Counting toes to nose, the six strings. Both three, two, five, two, three. So you wanna master that pattern. The two things that we're going to do in this piece are just this, da 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 da, and this, da do da do da do da do da do da do. If you want to play it like Paul, and what he's doing there is just using the first two fingers, both down up down up down, and he's just using the first finger to strum. Now it might sound smoother without nail. I've got kind of a, a nail for finger picking. So I prefer the finger picking way. All right, but I'm gonna to return to the finger picking way for the demonstration. So we do that twice. So reviewing. Go to the C, A shape C, root and major third. Now this is the cool secondary dominant thing. So here's a definition of a secondary dominant. So in any key, the fifth chord in that key, when we make that a seventh chord, it's a dominant seven chord. And it pulls back home to the first chord in the key, the home chord, in a very strong way. So when we're in a key, if we want to make any other chord other than the first chord, the home chord, that we then take the chord that would be the five chord, the five seven, the dominant seven chord of that chord and play it and then resolve to the new home chord. So now it gives us the feeling that a chord other than the first chord is the home chord. So it makes you hear a shifting key center. Now we go C sharp. Diminished fifth, not a third, diminished fifth. So C major third, C sharp diminished fifth. 
So this just comes up one fret. Remember, we're going chromatically in the bass line. Do, 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 do. So up one fret to C sharp, but the first finger just comes straight down to the E string, third fret. So fourth fret, third fret, but still that drone G, that pedal, so. Same fingers on the right hand. Now, harmonically, what's happening here is this is the third and seventh of an A7 chord. Even though it's a C sharp diminished, that's very closely related and functions as the same way as an A7 chord, which is the five chord of D which is the next chord we're going to go to. So instead of going instead of going from C to D to E minor, which is what we're going to do, he goes C fifth of the D, five chord of the D, because a five chord resolves to a one chord, D five chord of a E minor to E minor. So these are secondary dominants really. And it allows us to get this chromatic movement and all this tension and release. And this was also in the Bach Beret later in the piece, which you can download. So we got C, C sharp diminished, functioning as an A7, D major, D sharp diminished, functioning as a B7 to E minor. get to the E minor we do that pattern one time then we drop the root down to make it an E flat major this note stays the same so I like to do first finger ring finger then first finger pinky so then we walk down the same way we came up Again, now we're taking the bass chromatically down from here. So E minor, E flat major. Now we walk down the way we came up. D, C sharp diminished, C. Then we do the pattern again. Then C minor, this is a minor four chord. Very popular thing to do, to go four major, four minor to one. We work our way down to one, but so four major, four minor, back down to B minor, down to A7, because A7 is the five of D, and we're about to go to D, so A7, we just ra raise that third up. D, D sus four though, has a nice, unresolved, a little more um, open sounding. So that would be like this chord. And that's the only time we go to the D string as the root, then to the G. And then in the song, in the tab, I have the whole thing. Uh, he does a little tag at the end. You know, he goes through that sequence again. So again, to get the full structure, you can just watch the full tab video and play along with that. But we're just gonna go over each section in depth without going over the full entire um, song structure. Okay, so then the chorus modulates to G Dorian F major. So now we have the chords in the key of F major, which is F, E diminished, D minor, C major, B flat major, up to C major. So it's kind of like 
17654 Now we transition to the A7 5 of 5 D D7 Back to G All right, so I challenge you to take some of the features of this song and use that as influence to create your own song, your own riff. So we've got the open drone We've got the chromatic bass line. We've got the thirds or tenths interval. We've got the major four to minor four. We've got the modulation. There's just so many things that we went over. So I challenge you to create something, share it in the Fretboard Adventures Facebook group. Link to joins in the description. Share it on Instagram, at Music hashtag Challenge. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that lesson. I hope you got a great understanding of the underlying structures going on in Blackbird. I don't know about you, but for me, learning songs by ear is always the ultimate way to learn. But then the other thing is contextualizing everything you learn. Being able to put the numbers, the names, the shapes, and all that stuff to what you're learning so that you can then draw connections, compare and contrast different songs you're learning understand how certain structures sound. So it's that coming together of the ear and the knowledge that in my experience really gives you that fretboard freedom. So this lesson is actually a companion song lesson for my Fret Live Fretboard Mastery Program, which walks you through understanding how music works on the guitar, which starts at the very beginning just with the musical alphabet and how it's laid out on the guitar, then gets into how we create scales, harmony, chords, how to move those things all over the fretboard and play them in different areas and in different keys. And each step along the way, there's song lessons, creative challenges, and worksheets. And it's a live course, so we have live Zoom sessions every week. And there's a group where you could share your work and get feedback. So this course is a follow-up from my Soloing for Complete Beginners course in 2017. And the first 40 students, my first cohort, can join the February 1st launch. It'll be my first ever launch of this Fret Live Fretboard Mastery Program, and the link to sign up is in the description. All right, everybody, happy playing, have fun with this one, and I'll see you in the next lesson. But before I go, I just want to extend an extra special thank you to the following Pound Music patrons and all of the Pound Music patrons for making these lessons possible, and that is Alan Leia, Arwin Gu Zen, Cam Chernichan, Chris Freeman, Daniel Laranz, George Ryan, Jeff Four, Jim McCall, John Hartquist, John Cushman, Joseph McCarthy, Michael S. Anthony, Michael Varney, Morton Rafas, Mayango Chan, Noah Brand, Scott Martinez, Sweetness, Trampus Thompson, Sean Ellis, Don Stringham, and Todd Tripp. Thank you guys so much for being my ongoing upper tier patrons and thank you to all of the Pound Music patrons for your ongoing support and for making these lessons possible. Happy playing, and I'll see you next time.